number three, sir. Right this way. scintillating show. Never a down moment in the American bar. And to prove it, we now present that lovely young American song stylist, Miss Louise Latimer. They don't want it good, they want it loud. Pick up the tempo, boys. Oh, I can see it clearly, this thing we've nearly missed. When I said I'm yours sincerely, I proved it when we kissed. From here on in, those little dreams I sold you will all begin to come true like I told you. Although I've never been lucky, this is one that I'm going to win. You, my dear, from here on in, I mean, right from here on in, I see just where we're heading, from here on in, it's easy sledding, I see it clearly, just what we've nearly missed, I was yours sincerely, then Two, we came. Three. Observe the number of coins. Six. Now give me room. You missed it. You missed Are you the local comedian, or is this the British sense of humor in action? I say I'm terribly sorry. Really, I am. Even I know tossing pennies means the bird in any language. Please don't rub it in. I assure you it was an accident. Go on with your song. I'll be as quiet as a mouse. Is your voice as lovely as your eyes? If it weren't for that uniform, you'd be just another fresh drunk. If it weren't for your abominable rubies, you'd be the most adorable girl I've ever met. And you do dance divinely. Oh. <laughs> You must let me apologize. Shall we break a bottle of champagne over our newfound romance? No. Teetotaler. Good girl. Then I'll take you to supper instead. No. Not a gad about. Splendid. I've always wondered how angels live. Dogged sort of fellow, isn't he, Louise? One of the many admirable traits of the British soldier, old boy. Oh, hello, Bert. I'm so glad to see you. Now, if this gentleman will please excuse us. I'm Douglas Heath. Squadron leader Heath, if you find it more impressive. But you may call me Dud, Louise. How do you do? I'm Bert Lawrence. Sit down, won't you? I must be off in a minute. Tomorrow night, then? Same time? We can't afford to miss a single moment together. I've only got a 48 and then they're shipping me off to an aircraft factory somewhere in the wilds. Special job, hush-hush and all that. I'm sure you understand, don't I? Well, good night. Don't keep her up too late, will you, old man? I want her to be just as fresh and lovely tomorrow. There goes what we would call a character. Well, I won't have to stay here much longer, thanks to you, Bert, dear. It'll soon be the West End for me. The Century Theater, playing to the carriage trade, instead of a lot of would-be Romeos. When do I start rehearsal? Uh, well, Louise, I'm afraid Mr. Cartwright's gonna do his next review without the talents of my latest discovery. But, Bert, you promised. It's out of my hands, Louise. He's decided to do a patriotic musical with a different twist. He's going to choose his talent from various aircraft and munition plants throughout England. Realism to the last riveter and all that sort of thing. You see, we're working for the government now. Ensign. You know, Entertainment's National Services Association, similar to your USO, I understand. There goes my break. Well, I did everything I could, but he's made up his mind to scar England's factories for his new review. 
fine progress I'm making. Well, you haven't done so badly, really. I've only known you a month or so, and I've proposed to you an even dozen times. I suppose I'm being a fool, but I just can't settle for that yet. I've got to have my chance at the top, Bert. I've got to know that I was up there just once. And then if I slip back, I... You'll catch me, won't you? You know I will. Well, this looks a bit like life, doesn't it? I wonder if there's anybody I know here. Well, hello, hello, hello. It's Mr. Lawrence. What I, um... You remember me? Well, I can't quite recall, but the, your face is familiar. Familiar? It's positively monotonous. <laughs> you remember me? Emmy Finch. Double F. Bits and pieces. 1935. Your first show with old Cartwright. You were in the show? Oh, well, uh, practically. I was the one that was left over when you picked the chorus. I wound up in the second show on tour. <laughs> oh, Miss Latimer, may I present Miss Finch of the Double F Finches? How do you do? Oh, how do you do? <laughs> uh, won't you ask your um, gang to sit down with you? Oh. Oh, oh, Miss Latimer, uh, Mr. Lawrence, a battle. Oh, what is your last name, darling? Uh, what a chatterbox, isn't he? <laughs> what are you doing now, Miss Finch? Oh, uh, well, since the war, I've gone all patriotic. At first, I, I uh, drove a war off his car for a few weeks. One of those um, little uh, American uh, jeeps. You don't get into a jeep, you know, Miss Latimer. You pull it on like a girdle. <laughs> now what's on your agenda? Oh, I've got something really good now. I've signed up for the duration. Minton Aircraft Factory. I'm off tomorrow morning to Belford. Did you say an aircraft factory? Minton? Oh, that's one of the places Cartwright and I are going. I wonder if they could use an American girl there. Why not? They need girls. And you can push a riveting machine as hard on hamburger as you can on Yorkshire pudding, you know. What time does your train leave? 9.45, Waterloo Station. I'll meet you there on the platform. And not to see you off, either. I'm going with you. Oh, Miss Latimer. You're wonderful. Isn't she wonderful? Well, for heaven's sake, say something. Even if it's only goodbye. Goodbye. Well, see you in the morning. Waterloo Station. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Miss Lawrence. Look, old girl, you don't really Come mean... Come on, let's dance our goodbyes, shall we? <laughs> Louise. Now, don't argue with me, darling. I'm going to enroll at Minton Aircraft, and you're going to discover me there. Cartwright has to take someone back to London with him. Why not me? Then I'll leave the factory to the factory hands and go on to bigger and better things. It's not as simple as all that, I'm afraid. Once you go into war work, you're there for the duration. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Oh, do this for me, Bert. Let me get it out of my system. I swear if I fail, I'll never ask my future husband for another chance. Did you say husband? Very well, I'll wait. <laughs> you know, my dear, for England's sake, I hope your factory builds bombers as tough as you. <laughs> You haven't answered question four. Where were you born? 
Rolls Royce. Oh, Mother didn't quite make the hospital. What town were you born in? Adelsby on the Ash. Cockleton, Wilts. Louise Latimer. Oh, an American citizen. Yes, that's right. And you want to help out, good girl. Mm, you're in luck. There's a temporary shortage of aero detail workers in our special division. I'm going to sign you both there. It's rather a plum, you know. You'll be working on the new type plane the RAF is experimenting with. Come along, girl. I'll show you about the factory before you take over. We like you to know what a big job you're going to be part of. First, though, I think you better change clothes. to those gray hairs for that nasty man in Germany. It takes physical stamina as well as determination in a woman these days, Miss Latimer. On your feet for what seems interminable periods, using every soft muscle in your body. That girl was formerly a teacher of English history. Now she's helping to make it. It's a monotonous job. Same operation hour after hour, day after day. Rather a dull task for an intelligent girl. But then war isn't a particularly intelligent business. Come along, I'll show you where you're going to work. It is a bit frightening, isn't it? Just remember it's girls like you who are doing the job. You'll soon get to the swing of it. I see your charge hand. He'll sign you. Sam, here are two new girls for you, fresh from training school. Well, by gum. If they work as good as their looks, my section will win the prize again this month. This is Sam Keats, your charge hand. Emily Finch and Louise Latimer. Well, good luck, girl. Come and see me anytime I can help you. Thank you. We came here to work, remember? Uh, oh, yes. You'd better follow me, ladies. Now you can divide these ear drill presses between you. There's your stuff. Now go to it for king and country. And come to see me any time I can help you. Oh my. He's got ever such nice eyes, hasn't he? Yeah, and what's in him isn't stamped made in Britain either. Come on, let's kick it around for king country and 60 cents an hour. show with the first time being one of London's nightclub favorites, The Hot Shots. Oh, hello. 
are you getting on? Fine, thank you. I thought I left all this behind me in London, but looks like I'm in for a busman's holiday. <laughs> it's a tremendous lift after hours on the job. The government sent over 6,000 shows to our factories. They say it's raised production at least 11%. Ladies and gentlemen, for something as novel as it is entertaining, one of America's favorite song stylists has flown over to sing for the Yankee troops, and she has very kindly consented to join our show and do her stuff for you Minton folk. I know that you will extend your heartiest greeting to Miss Gertrude Neeson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Irwin. You're very kind. But it didn't take much urging to have me come and see the men and women who were building the planes that give old Schicklegruber his daily pasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, what to sing for you required a little more thought. And then I remembered coming over on the bomber. One of the girls said to me, what are the British like? Who are their famous people? And I started ripping off a lot of names. In fact, so many, I surprised myself. I thought, by golly, that would make a very good song. So if I may, I'd like to tell you what one American girl said to another American girl. It's called, Who Are the British? Who are the British? The Bacons and the Kiplings. Who are the British? There's William Shakespeare, too. Who are the British? The Remingtons and Reuters. Who are the British? A diplomatic crew. Hail to the British, they're a diplomatic crew. Hail to the island, cause it saw them through. Who are the British? The Nelsons and the Gladstones. Who are the British? The Lloyds of London, too. They're a free and able crew. Sullivan's and the Gilberts. Who are the British? There's Beatrice Lily, too. Who are the British? Jack Hilton and Sir Beecham. Who are the British? An entertaining crew. Hail to the British, they're an entertaining crew. Hail to the island with its people brave and true. Who are the British? Those crazy fields and Morton. Who are the British? There's no car, too. Entertaining crew. Britannia forever and forever. Who are the British? The Stafford, Crips, and Edith. Who are the British? There's General Wavell, too. Who are the British? The Baffin and Montgomery. Who are the British? They're a fearless fighting crew. Right up. Hail to the British, they're a fearless fighting crew. Hail to the island with its fighting sons of crew. Who are the British? There's General Alexander. Who are the British? Lord Beaverbrook, it's true. They're a fearless fighting crew. Hail to the British, for they've done a good lot. Hail to the British, oh, but we almost there's one more Britain that we forgot to mention, our Winston Churchill.
you, miss. Why isn't that machine working? I say, it's you. What are you doing here? Isn't this a rather drastic change of scene? I thought you were a singer or something. How could you tell? I didn't think you even heard me. And by the way, isn't this quite a change for you, too? I thought you did most of your flying in nightclubs. I'm the RAF man in charge here. You... you're in charge here? Now, isn't that just ducky? We'll leave that aspect of it for another time. Let's get on with our work. Oh, so sorry. Hold on, then. Oh, please, this is no nightclub. Where's the handkerchief for your head? Your concern for my appearance is a little out of place, don't you think? I'm not interested in your appearance, simply your safety. You might catch your hair in that machine and have a nasty accident. Find it up at once. Now, listen, soldier. I assure just... you that this is quite impersonal. I'm well aware that this is not, as you say, a nightclub. But I cannot afford to have anyone laid up because of negligence least of all. Now, bind it up at once. Cover your hair with it in that fashion. It's regulation here. Big stuff, shirt. Thinks he can give me the business just because I checked him out the last time I saw him. Be that as it may, you better tuck that pretty hat away like he says. Before you get snatched bald-headed. Yeah, what about these pieces? No, we'll take it this way and like it. I don't have to look like a wet seal, do I? Coming along nicely. Good girl. What's wrong? I put my head close to, to inspect it and then... Did she have her kerchief knotted tightly? Well, no, I didn't exactly notice. You stubborn little fool. Don't you realize it might have been your head in the machine? What's wrong, sir? This girl's had a near thing. A loose end of her kerchief must have caught in the press. Didn't you instruct her? Well, sir, she's just come from the training school and they always... It's your it. job to see that safety rules are obeyed, Keats. It's part of your responsibility. But not all. The charge hands can't do your thinking for you, my girl. If you haven't the wits to follow instructions, then you're not up to this work. You can read, can't you? These signs are put there expressly to remind you that one moment's laxness may cost a finger, an eye, an arm, even a life. And we need all those fingers and eyes and arms to do the job we're here for. This girl is an example of what we're trying to prevent. Millions of man hours are lost by seconds of carelessness. The factory installs every safety device possible to ensure your safety. But it cannot give you more brains than you bring to work with. You've given those brains to His Majesty's government for the duration. Don't let them regret the bargain. All right, everybody, back to work. Come on, nothing serious. Let's get on with it. Dirt, grease, broken fingernails. If this is factory life in merry old England, you can have it with a pound of cheese. But it's our day off. What should we do with it? Look, should we join the gang in the boarding house? They're going to hike to Rustenbury this afternoon to that uh, market fair. You know, hike? After standing on my feet all week? <laughs> no thanks. I think I'll just sit here and hate myself for getting into the whole mess. Or better still, I think I'll do my hating on what the landlady laughingly calls a mattress. Cheer up, ducks. Don't let things get you down. Be like me. Another day like yesterday, and I could do without the factory entirely and everyone in it. Oh, so that's the way the wind blows. What do you mean? By everyone, you mean Mr. R.A.F. Heath. Ooh, I don't think it'll be long before you can't do without him. Americans have a word for that. Fooey. Here, don't you be so cocky, Louise. You'll eat your words. You'll see. You girls are left to shove over for another border. I'm full up and the troops have taken over the inn. So it's three to a room from now on. And no reduction in the rent, neither. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mrs. Smithers. Isn't it crowded enough in here already? Not half what it's going to be. Come in. This is Janie Brooks. She works in the factory, too. Well, did she bring the stock room with her? I'm just as put out as you are, Miss High and Mighty. Oh, I remember you. That good-looking RAF chap didn't ask give you what for. Next time you set your cap at him, you mustn't get it caught in the machine. One of the hardships of war, I guess. We've got to share our bed with a gremlin. Do you work at the factory, too? 
I've seen your face before. Oh, no doubt. It's on every bottle of iodine. Here you are. Thirty bucks. Came about a hour ago. Oh, you needn't be so dog at the major about it. I'm sure it's nothing to me. Already read it, anyhow. Good news by the grin on your face. Oh, it's the stuff dreams are made of. And I quote, if you don't mind, girls, I'd like to hang a few of my things. Oh, why help yourself, Brooksy? Take a hanger. Take a lot of hangers. Take my dresses if they'll fit. Just call me Big Hearted Bertha from Brooklyn. Well, <laughs> no telling what you Yanks will do next. I'll unpack later. It's almost time for the outing anyway. Are you going? To the fair? I might. What's the good of fun and games if you haven't got a boyfriend? I've got a boyfriend. A proper handsome one, too. Maybe I'll introduce you when he calls for me. I've got my eye on a boy at the factory. Do you think your boyfriend could arrange for me to meet him? Shouldn't wonder. What's his name? I call him Goo Goo Eyes because he makes me feel so goofy. <laughs> that must be my Sammy now. Oh, hello. Hello. Right room, wrong girl. The uh, landlady said I'd find Janie Brooke here. She... Hello, Sam. Oh, hello. Come in. I'll be ready in half a shake. Oh. I'm sharing this room with the girls here. Goo Goo Eyes. What did you call me? See you, Sam. Oh, hello, hello. What's all this here? Don't be so disgusting, Sam Keats. That's my washing. Very nice, too. It isn't patriotic to wear things like that. I wear wool. It's economical and very healthy. So's castor oil. Come on, Sam. Sit what down. Squadron Leader Heat reporting, Miss. And may the gentleman pay his respects to the most beautiful lady in England. And Brooklyn, of course. And what brings you here? Did you forget something yesterday? No, I think I covered everything. But just in case, I looked up your time card and found this was your Saturday off. So shall we pick it up from there? No, thanks. I think we'll just let it play. Come now, on, we'll let it play. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on, boy. Oh, I am sorry. It's quite all right. You know how it is. American girls are so impulsive. Oh, <laughs> now, if that will be all. <laughs> I don't mind an audience, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, Louise, where shall we go? What about a quick trip to London? I'm sorry, but I'm going to the fair at Rustenbury. Come on, then. So am I. I'll get my hat. Hurry up, old dear. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. Come on, everybody. Let's be off to the fair with thumbs up. Thumbs up, keep your thumbs up, no matter what comes up. Fair and green. Then all of your sorrow will be gone with tomorrow when the new day will begin.
Jane has got little fly in her beer. It got what? Naughty little fly, look. All right, all right. Just tear a coupon out of your ration book and it's all yours. Oh! <laughs> well, that's the smile. You've no idea how attractive your mouth looks with the corners turned up. I can't help it. He looks so, so silly. Here, it's worth it. Oh, no. You deserve a lot worse punishment than a dunking, my friend. Well, I'm working my way up. From enemy to friend in the twinkling of a beer mug. They always said I'd go far. Come on, let's do the fair. If they have a shooting gallery, you can take pot shots at me for a nominal fee. Oh, and that's the best offer I've had since I landed in England. like to bag me. She wants a stuffed British soldier's uniform for her mantelpiece. Any objections if she tries a few shots at me? Oh, I'll see. Married. Well, it comes in mighty handy around the house. It's noiseless. <laughs> Better practice first. You might miss me. Would that be bad? No, no, no. This way. Where did you learn your gunnery, soldier? In a rumble seat? This is purely scientific mind over matter, I think I'm in trouble. Now lean a little this way. Well, balance is all important, you know. Now close both eyes. Both eyes? What? Du eins allein ist der, was alles zuzuschreiben. Bullseye. Got him the first time. There's a man who knows what he's talking about. How did it happen? Magic or chemistry, if you prefer. At any rate, we click. This is a different you from the man who nearly bit my head off in the factory. That's another thing in time. And a very important one. That's my job. And this is just relaxation? Oh, you know it isn't, don't you? This is a job I'd like to take on when the other is completed. I don't want to wave any flags at you, but I know you understand. You must. You're part of it, too. You pitched in to help when you didn't really have to. That's one of the many things I admire about you, in addition to the things I love. Oh, too much airspeed, Heath. Mustn't rush the lady. Or must I? See my Sam under the trees. Much more efficient than he ever was at the factory. <laughs> hey, come on, you two. The gang's gathered together for a bit of fun. Of another sort, I mean. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, Yank, you're the only real singer in the old gang. Help him out. Not me. In the words of that famous American statesman, I don't dig this John Bull jive. I mean, this tempo is strictly golden bantam. You know, corny. Look, that's a foreign language to us. What she means is the way they were doing the number is old stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, it's an American number. Do it any way you like. Go on, show us how you do yes, it in the state. Right. Go on, Louise. That's okay. So. All right, boys, here's the beat and keep it hot and handy. One. Two. You've heard love defined in oh so many ways. Each one racks his mind to coin a brand new phrase. I don't know if I've succeeded, but I'll go ahead. I just know I've only heeded not my heart, but my head. 
a sigh and suddenly it's spring black is white and day is night love is a corny thing you chase bees initial trees and bells begin to ring moonlight walks baby talks love is a corny thing then we've got rest of the well-known plot you start acting crazy pounce upon a daisy he loves me yes he loves me not then one day you rush away the shoes and brass they fling if this mess is happiness why were you ever born love is a corny thing My brain's out and call me Lieutenant if it ain't a chitter dog. Oh, never loving school queen. Why don't you tell me that goulash? It's a monkey jump, gang. Come on, let's break it down. We're free to the socks. Free French. That ain't the fair now. <laughs> is cutting a rug. Amazing people, these Americans. They're cutting a rug, and there is no blooming rug. when you came here. Once a ham, always a ham. Can't resist the whiff of grease paint, you know, wafting across the rivets. Neither can you, apparently. Oh, I just wrote my name down there, but I'm not so sure I'll go through with it. Please, don't be silly. You'll romp home an easy winner. You think so? Well, how about Sam Keats? Hi, how about him? Here's the lad in person. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, I lay 12 to 1 the field. 12 to 1, bar 1. Even money, Sam Keats, the factory's favorite. My favorite, too, but not in the factory. Well, you do kids rather like a riveting machine. <laughs> I see you're in the race, Yank. Better look out for me on the straight. I might come up on the rails and pip you at the post. Sounds a little indecent. I'll keep my eyes open. What are you doing at the tryout? Oh, I've worked out something very special for the occasion. I'm going to show them my versatility. <laughs> Emmy, would you like to sing a duet with me for my second number? Would I? <laughs> Here's the joke, I love the bloke, love is a balmy thing. I, you see, was fancy free, a bird that loved to wing. But what's the use, she's cooked this goose, love is a balmy thing. Oh, we're in love, it seems we go hand in glove. Gruesome. But we're a perfect twosome, if, if you, you know, know what we're thinking of. It 
chips yet, but I just had loaves due for rationing. But they can't stop the sweetheart crop, so you can still keep calm. <laughs> Love is a balmy Your turn next, Dax. Where's your boyfriend? I don't know. Maybe he heard enough at the Rosen Crown. Now, the next contestant is Miss Louise Latimer, nicknamed, I believe, the Yank, for obvious reasons. Miss Latimer. <laughs> See the French girl and Sam Keats. They may not be champagne, but they bubble like fresh beer. But what about the Latimer girl? She seems almost too professional. But she's an American. Certainly more of a novelty than the others we've got. And as for the publicity, you know, a Yank doing her bit in England and all that, why, she'll get more space in the papers than the rest of the London shows put together. Bert, you should have sold insurance. You'd be disgustingly rich. Think of it. No more 12 hour grinds with a riveting machine. No more fourth floor bedrooms smelling of musty sheets and cabbage soup. A few days to go, and then no more Minton aircraft. It's a strand and a new star shining in the blackout. Now, easy, old girl. You're hardly a star yet. And even if they permitted lights on the marquee, I don't think your name would constitute much of a target. All I want is a chance, and I'll take care of the rest. I'm on my way up like a cork underwater. Nothing can stop me now. Well, when you get that incendiary gleam, I shouldn't want to try. Louise. Yes, Bert. Louise, I... Oh, dash it, there's no use in trying to phrase it cleverly. It's about us. Oh, I realize you'd rather wait till you get this out of your system, but if you love me enough to marry me at all, why can't it be now? It won't take up a great deal of your time to make me happy. It isn't that. I, I'm selfish enough, heaven knows, but... I wouldn't want to wish a part-time wife on you. What is it, then? Give me one good reason why we can't be married now. I can't give you a good reason, Bert. Just a woman's reason. I'm 
too full of what's happened to think about wedding bells now. Louise. Please. We'll go into the matter of the pipe and slippers in London. Opening night. I promise. The way you avoid an issue. You go far in politics, my dear. Good night, Bert. Good night, my dear. Bertram Lawrence of London and the American Bar. I'm here to congratulate Louise on winning the triads tonight. What's your excuse? Is an excuse necessary? <laughs> Touche. We're obviously here for the same reason, but you're wasting your time, old boy. Really? I hardly think so. Well, of course, every man to his own peculiar taste. If you enjoy a little harmless flirtation with another bloke's fiancé... What was that you said? Fiancé. You know, the betrothed, the little intended and all that. I understand I'm engaged to her, but correct me if I'm wrong. With pleasure. You're wrong. You should have kept in touch, old son. Things happen quickly these days, you know. Emotional blitzkrieg, you might call it. Louise and I... Now look here, Heath. I think we'd better have a little chat. If you like. I'm not convinced that you're seriously in love with Louise. The way that I am, I mean. Willing to take the bad with the good. Aren't you rather overdoing the dramatic stuff? No. Now, what I'm going to tell you demands more than a witty answer, Heath. Well, let's hear it. You shall. Louise is a desirable woman. Lovely, vital and all that. Seemingly all that a man could ask. But she's also ambitious, selfish, hard. She has only one goal. To star on the London stage. Her break, as she calls it. All her love is reserved for that. A man must be a poor second. You seem to be able to grin and bear it. Yes, I've been able to so far. That's why I agreed to her plan. That of taking a job in the factory. To make her eligible for Cartwright's new show. I'm his associate, you see. Well, tonight she accomplished what she came here for. And now, having fulfilled that proud ambition, she'll return to London and, I hope, to me. You're lying. You can't believe it because you don't understand Louise. It's the bad that goes with the good, you see. I thought you should know. behind Miss Butter wouldn't melt in her mouth Latimer. I don't believe a word of it. Not one word that comes out of your big mouth, Janie Brooke. Very loyal and all that, I'm sure, Emmy. But I ought to know what I heard with my own ears. Our precious Yank working side by side with the common people to do her bit. Yes, for herself. A pretty mess, isn't it? I almost feel sorry for her. Can't be a nice feeling to know you're a cheat. I don't feel sorry for her, I don't. Nasty little sneak. Hello, everybody. I almost missed it. I went up... What's up, Janie? What's up, she says. Innocent as a babe, she is. I don't think. Your little game's up, that's what. Now you can save your acting for that precious show instead of pretending you're a decent girl like the rest of us. We know why you took this job. Mighty clever, weren't you? You and your Mr. Lawrence. Well? You got what you came here for. Why don't you clear out? I don't know what you mean. Cat's out of the bag for fair, ain't it? You should have warned Lawrence and Douglas Heath to talk over your affairs where others couldn't hear. Douglas Heath? Yes, he's on to you too. And I shouldn't be surprised if last night wasn't the last time we'll see him decorating our front porch. What about this British fair play that we are so proud of? Give the girl a chance to speak for herself. Well? Well? 
Emmy, please. I know I can make you understand. Sorry. I'm here to work. Emmy, I want to talk to you. Miss Latimer? Yes? You girls won't be working the pressures this afternoon. This section's been assigned to hydraulic check. We're going to test the landing gear on the new plane, so come along and I'll show you what to do. Come on, girls. Fellas, come on, follow me, everybody. Get up! Gear down! Gear down! The release valve needs a bit of grease. I'll get the grease gun for you. Don't bother. You won't be with us long. We want to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. Gear up! Gear up! Gear down! Gear down! I'm coming, Pete. She's a bit sluggish yet, I'd say, sir. Let me try it. Gear up. Gear up. Does seem a bit sluggish, doesn't it? Yes, sir. See if the new parts I ordered have come through, will you? Right, sir. Oh, be sure and hang that control panel on the ladder, sir. It's regulations. Double twist of the cord. Might cause a nasty accident if anyone was to push that button by mistake. Right you are. Doug. Well? Please, I want to talk to you. Let me simplify things. All you need is one word. Lawrence wasn't lying, was he? No. Strange how simple it is, eh? Or better, what a simpleton I was. Doug. Gear down. Gear down. Mr. Heath, would you look at these plans for a moment, please? Right. for that, isn't it? You've certainly done yourself proud here, and no mistake. How did it happen? Well, speak up, one of you. She won't speak up, you may be sure of that. But I will, don't you worry. I didn't see it happen, but I saw her tying the panel to the ladder after it happened. Were you fooling with the control button? 
No, I... This girl says she saw you with a control panel in your hand. No unauthorized person is allowed to touch it. The rules are very clear on that point. It won't do you any good to lie, you know. No, you're right. It won't do any good to lie. What she says is quite true. Begun when you got here. It won't be necessary, Emmy. I'm leaving for good. If it was good you were interested in, you'd never have come here. Don't rub it in. I made a mistake and I'm paying for it. You're paying for it. <laughs> You've got it all tied up in pink ribbons, haven't you? Well, there's more to it than that, Louise. What about the trouble you've caused at the factory? And what about the friendships you've laughed at behind that sweet smile of yours? Yes, and all the others. Factory hands, do you? But they were lawyers and architects and businessmen and painters and secretaries, school teachers and clergymen before they gave up their ambitions for this job. They're working with their hands for what they feel in their hearts. You wouldn't understand that, though. You've got a stick of grease paint where your heart ought to be. Emmy, please. Oh, please. If you've got any excuses, keep them for Lucy Hobbs, the girl you put in hospital. She's got a stake in your cheap career as well. I've been to see Lucy. The doctor says he can save her arm. Oh. Thank the Lord for the first time in your life. And you might add a prayer. The people you've known here won't think that all Americans are like you. <laughs> Thanks to the testimony of the injured girl, Miss Latimer is quite in the clear. The responsibility, if any, is Mr. Heath's. But I'm happy to tell you that the consequences have not proven serious. That's good. But what about the Yank? I mean, Louise. I say, Kendrick. Oh, hello there. It's about the accident, isn't it? Mm hmm Good. I can clear the whole thing up in a jiffy. It was entirely my fault. I neglected to make the control panel secure to the ladder, as per regulations, after Keats here had made a point of telling me. I know. It's all been explained, and much more satisfactory than Miss Latimer's attempt. She accepted full blame to protect a <clears throat> certain young officer. I expect Captain Heath knows who that is. He's a right smart one, he is. I'm afraid I haven't been particularly smart up till now. But that can be remedied. Will you give Miss Latimer the afternoon off on unofficial business? Well, that won't be necessary. Miss Latimer resigned her job and has left Minton for good, I expect. Resigned? Yes. Under ordinary circumstances, the Essential Works Act would keep her here, regardless of the accident which took place. But uh, being an American, hers is an unusual case. Before I had the opportunity of uh, taking disciplinary measures, she asked for the privilege of resigning. Whatever for? Well, she felt that she was a misfit here, that she wasn't wanted. I gather that the other employees uh, had made that pretty obvious. Yes, but that was because, well, there's nothing that can't be straightened out, especially after what she did today. I think there's a great deal to be straightened out. And we better get on with it. If you don't mind, Kendrick, we'll take over from here. Good luck. We need girls for the stuff she's got. Right. Come along. Yes, sir. Come in. Where is she? If it's Miss Latimer you're looking for, and I can't imagine why, she's gone. And a good job, too. Gone? We've got to get her back, Emmy. Whatever for? Hasn't she done enough to all of us? The accident wasn't her fault. I haven't time to explain, but she took the blame to save my precious neck. And I'm going to find her and tell her and marry her and whatever else I can do to make up for it. That's good enough for me. 
Ah, but where did she go? Didn't she leave any word? She, she must have, have gone, gone back to... Rocco! Come on. Samuel Keats? If you go through that door, I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. If I go through that door? Yes. It'll probably kill me, but it'll be cheap at any price. from Belford, a little town where they manufacture airplanes. It seems they wanted to tell me something about the girl who's going to represent them in our new review. It's no go, Bert. I've no right to represent those people back there. I don't represent what they stand for, and you and I both know it. I've always had plenty of nerve, but I couldn't stand on the same stage with the others from plants all over England, dying a hundred times every time anyone looked at me. I'd know I was there because of a cheap, shoddy trick that sticks in my throat like something rotten. I'd know that I'd bought my way with something you can't write checks for. My self-respect. No, Bert. Thanks for everything, but... This time, I want to like myself before I worry about others liking me. And the ones who love you? Little boys always love things best that aren't good for them. Well, I haven't been called a little boy for so many years, I find it rather stimulating. Goodbye, Louise. All the best, of course. Always. Thanks, Bert. Thanks for everything. Well, squadron leader Heath, London and the American Bar. Isn't this rather a vicious circle? You've talked to Louise? Congratulations? No. Congratulations to you. of yours. It's a pleasure. From here on, we all know where 